So let's talk about how to set up Visual Studio Code to talk to the Google Chrome console. This is a really valuable tool when you're learning how to write JavaScript because it will allow you to run your JavaScript functions and see the results in the console where you can debug them, uh, put in console logs, and then eventually when you're building apps, it's a really great way to inspect what you're putting on the screen and just kind of generally see you know what you're building in real time. So let's get this all set up so that you can get instantaneous feedback on the code that you're writing and make your life a lot easier. So uh, I'm going to assume that you've already downloaded Visual Studio Code. If you haven't done that, go ahead and pause this and do that. Um, once you've done that, go ahead and open it up on your computer. And you should see a screen that looks like this. Um, there are lots of ways to get to a file that you want to make, but I'm going to go kind of the easiest way for right now. And eventually when you get comfortable with this, you can find other ways to find what you're looking for. But um, if you hit this open folder icon, now you can kind of figure out wherever you want to put your stuff. So I have a folder called projects that I like to use um, that I put all of my uh, coding stuff in. So I'm going to go into my project folder. I'm going to hit a uh, new folder. I'm going to make a new folder inside of there. I'm going to call this VS Code um, Awesomeness. I should have picked a shorter thing that I could spell. Okay. Anyway, there we go. So I've got my new folder. It's empty. I'm going to open it. And so we've got this get started screen right here and we don't actually need that. So I'm just going to get rid of that for right now. Over here, you can see the folder that I just made. It's open when I click on it, that goes down. And then here you can see, uh, there's a couple of little icons here and we're going to want to add some files into our folder. So let's do that. So I'm going to create a new page by clicking on that, it's gonna be called index.html and that's just sort of a classic name to name <laughs> your HTML page. I'm gonna hit enter and that's gonna make my new file which has been magically opened up over here. So I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna make another new file and I'm gonna call this app.js and then I'm gonna hit enter. And again, you see I've opened it up over here, or I haven't, but you know, the computer did. <laughs> um, and so now that it's ready for us to work in. Um, before we go further, there's a couple of other things that we're going to want to do to make your life ultimately much easier here. Um, so we're going to make sure that we have an extension installed. And extensions are things that VS Code has a gazillion of them, and they make your coding life a little bit easier. Um, so we're going to go over here to the little stack of boxes. That's where the extensions are. And up here, you're going to, uh, start to type in, you're going to look for something called live server and it should search. And you're looking for, you know, there's lots of things that are kind of called that, but you're looking for this one called live server by Ritwick day. And when you find that, go ahead and click on it. Now I've already got it installed. So you'll probably see something over here that says to install it. Um, so actually let me do that. Here we go. So <laughs> I'm going to hit install. It's installing it. Life is good. Um, when it's installed, you should see down here, this little thing looks like a, you know, wireless signal that says go live. Um, and that's going to be, um, your thing that tells you that live server is up and ready to go. Um, sometimes it gets a little buggy. You have to disable it, re-enable it, uninstall it. Um, just kind of mess around with it if it's giving you trouble. Um, so I don't need uh, this extensions thing open anymore and I don't need to see my live server anymore. So I'm going to exit out of that tab. And then I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to hit my little pages again. Um, and this gives me my list of uh, files once more. So now that I've got my live server installed, um, oh, there's one thing that I forgot to do. Let's go back in and we're going to go... Uh, into live server and then we're going to go into the little settings right here there's a little gear and i'm going to go into extension settings and i'm just going to scroll down and i'm going to make sure that my live server settings for custom browser has chrome if you don't have chrome you're not going to get to the chrome dev tools <laughs> when you hit go live so just make sure that this does in fact say chrome right here if it doesn't you know change it from whatever else it was and make sure it's chrome Okay, great. So you've got that. We can now uh, X out of settings again. We can X out of our live server and go back to our little pages. All right, we've got our files back and we see our two files. Okay, so 
Now, the next thing you want to do, we're almost there, I promise, is you want to make sure your autosave is on. So what this makes sure is that it's continually updating what you see and what code is being run so that you don't make a change and then you haven't saved your file and then you're kind of driving yourself nuts because you're wondering why the thing you just did isn't working. Um, so autosave is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So we're going to go up here to file and I'm on a Mac and uh, if you're on Windows, I apologize, but I'm sure that it is uh, very similarly labeled and located and you should be able to uh, find it. Make sure that right here, autosave is checked. Okay. And if you have that, life should be good and we can keep going. Okay, so now um, we're back in our files. I want to make sure that I'm in my index.html file. And right here, I'm just going to type in an exclamation point, and I'm going to take my hands off the keyboard. And you should see this thing pop up that says Emmet abbreviation. And what you'll notice is it's giving you all of this boilerplate HTML, which is awesome. Um, so you don't have to remember this. You don't have to know what it is. You can just type in exclamation point, and then you can hit either tab or enter and it should dump it all onto your screen for you, which is awesome. So uh, go ahead and do that. If it doesn't work, um, you're gonna have to check some, some settings. So if it doesn't work, go up to code up here and then uh, go to preferences and then settings. And then once you're in settings, you go into extensions and then you're gonna go into Emmet. So those little abbreviations are called Emmet abbreviations. And you're gonna make sure that it says show abbreviation, ah, here, show expanded abbreviation always, okay? Um, and just make sure that you've got these things checked um, and that should do the trick. Okay, so let's get out of there. Um, so I'm back into my index.html. So Inside of your body tags on line 10, if you want to just make sure that you've got um, something sh showing up that you, you make sure you've got everything uh, connected properly, you can type something in here, you know, classic hello world is just fine. Um, and when we run this, you should see this appear um, in Google Chrome. Um, so that's just a good quick check that you can do. You don't have to do it once you're more comfortable. Like I usually just leave that blank, um, but it's always a nice little reassurance to know that it's actually in there. Um, Okay, so um, the other thing we need to do here, though, is we need to make sure that these files are talking to each other. So what we're working toward here is that we're going to write some JavaScript and we're going to make sure that our browser knows about it. And so that's where the index.html comes into play. So right here, I'm going to take advantage of my Emmet abbreviations again. So I'm going to type in SC and then I'm going to take my hands off the keyboard. And you've got two options here. I'm going to pick the second one and hit enter or tab. And inside of those uh, quotation marks, I'm going to just put my app.js file and you can see it very nicely uh, added it in there for me and I could just click on it or you can type the whole thing. It's pretty short, whatever works for you. Um, okay, so now, <laughs> moment of truth, we should be up and running. So what I want to do now is go over here to my go live button and I'm gonna hit that you're gonna see a little starting, you're gonna say it's port colon 5550, and you should have had a lovely Google Chrome tab pop up, and you can see it says 55, what did I say before? I didn't say the right thing. You know what I mean, <laughs> 5500. Um, so you know that this is the same port, they're talking to each other, you got your lovely hello world, life is great. So now we're in business, we can start to do some JavaScript. So uh, here, you may have done this before, um, you can hit uh, Option Command J. I think Option Command I actually works too. Let me see. Close that down. Yeah, they both work. I, so Option Command I or Option Command J, and this is your console. Don't worry about this um, right here. This is a warning favicon. That's just that little like picture, like it's that globe that shows up up here. Um, don't let that freak you out. It's just a message. You might not even get it on yours. Um, so that's what that is. Um, okay, next, what are we gonna do? Oh, we're gonna like make some uh, 
make some JavaScript happen here. So right now, going back and forth between these two windows is going to be, you know, a little bit awkward. So let's make this a little bit easier to look at. I know that I'm not doing anything with my HTML right now. I just want to write some, some JavaScript problems. So I'm actually going to undock this um, so I can put it uh, on my screen next to VS Code and make it look um, just easier to see. So I'm going to go to these three dots right here. And then you can choose where the dock goes, and this one means undock it. So when I hit that, it's going to pop out into its own little window here, which is also really handy if you are building a web page and you don't want it to take up space and squish your web page down. Um, so that's nice. So now I can scoot this out of the way, and I can move this stuff around. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to like move this over, make this a little bigger so I can see what's going on here. And then, you know what, this is kind of annoying to have in the way, so I'm just going to click those little pages again, and that folds it down and collapses it. So now I have this nice little place where I can write my JavaScript code here, and it will show up over here. So check this out. Um, and over here, if you want to clear this, um, you can hit Command K, and that will clear anything that's on there. All right, so back over to here, let's write a function and we're just gonna call it add. We're gonna keep this simple <laughs> just so that you can see um, what's going on here. Um, and you can see it's already giving me some errors <laughs> as I type um, and that's fine. So now we're gonna say return um, num1 plus num2. No, I can type, I really can, num2. Num <laughs> And so all the errors are gone because I've finished typing. Um, and that's what the, um, the autosave is doing. It's just constantly checking this JavaScript file. So now when I come over here, I can actually call my function add. And I can, and look, it's already saying, oh, I'm expecting num1 and num2. So it's, it's reading your JavaScript file and putting it into Chrome console live and like instantaneously. And it just makes life so easy. So if I put in three and five and we've got eight. So this is really, 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 really handy, <laughs> especially as you get into more complicated things. So say, I mean, this is a really trivial example, but say you're not sure what's happening. You just want to see like, what is num1 right now? Because I, I just, you know, I'm not getting what num1 is. Obviously, you probably would with this. Pretty easy example, but you can imagine harder things where you're just like losing track of your variables or like, ah, what is this thing happening right here? Console log is a really great way to check that. So now when I do my add and I'm going to do five and six. So now when I run this, I'm getting, oh, okay, five is num one and my answer is 11. So it's a, I cannot overstate how useful this is. <laughs> And how life-changing this was for me to discover. Now, obviously, console log isn't your only tool. Um, there is a whole Chrome debugger, which is even better. And again, you can just, you know, keep these side by side, run your debugger when you need it. Um, there are other videos um, on the Rhythm site about how to use that. So definitely feel free to dive in. Um, but I really hope that this kind of helps to clear things up. The Oh, one more thing before we go, because... Uh, VS Code is awesome and you should know about this, um, which is say like you've got some weirdness going on with like, you know, you've been typing away and everything's kind of a mess and, you know, you've got things that are indented and not indented and just looking kind of funky. If you go over here and you right click, you'll see this menu pop up. And if you come down here to format document and click that, it cleans everything up. This is so useful for if you have a bunch of like, um, if num1 is greater than num2, then I don't know, uh, console log, hooray. <laughs> I don't know why that's something to celebrate, but sure, let's celebrate that. Um, but you can notice here that there's little lines that connect like which curly braces go together. So like this curly brace goes to that one and there's a line connecting it this curly brace and this curly brace, there's a line connecting them. So you know that that block is a block. Um, and sometimes if your formatting is off, it's hard to see that. Um, so, you know, if something's looking a little bit messy, right click and then go to format document 
and now you can see where your code blocks, your curly braces begin and end. It just makes life a lot easier. Um, so I don't want to go on for too much longer. This is already getting pretty long, but uh, I hope that helps. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I feel like getting your tools set up the right way really does actually make you code it's easier to think about your code because it's easier to see what's going wrong when, and so therefore it's like a lot easier to logic your way through things that may be happening. All right, so that's it for today. And uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful.